safe from the warfare and the attack of the enemy. We thank you because you're a God that hears every cry, a God that is able to meet every need, a God that sits high and that looks low and that knows every challenge, every crisis that we face. We're just so glad that you loved us so much that while we were yet in our sins, while we were yet going through our struggle that you made a way. And Lord, we know this because because you are the way, because you are the truth, and because you are the life. And oh God, thank you for life through Jesus Christ our Lord. While we were yet dead in our sins, you came and shed your innocent blood that we may have an opportunity to be washed from our iniquities, to be cleansed, oh God, from every transgression, oh God, and to be made whole and renewed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now we ask you to pour out your spirit on this congregation. Let your people 
hear a word from heaven. Let them open up their ears and open up their hearts and be receptive to the move of your spirit. For certainly, oh God, they that are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Have your way in this house and we'll be careful to praise you. We'll give you the glory and the honor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It is our prayer and everybody will clap your hands and give him some praise in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to ask our praise team to come. And as they come, I want to remind you, you are not being entertained. Amen. Praise our God, but they are bringing you, they are bringing you into worship. So why don't you get your tamarines ready? Why don't you get your hand clapping ready? Praise the name of our God. If you can't do nothing else, just wave your hand and tell God, Lord, I thank you for what you've already done in Jesus. to magnify and glorify the Lord, hallelujah, because he has been so good to me, and he's been making a way out of no way, keeping me from danger, seen and unseen, hallelujah, and I'm just asking that you just pray and worship with me, because I need you, Lord, I need you in my everyday life, in my everyday walk, and I don't know about you, but this life isn't worth living without Christ, hallelujah, I need the
the praise team leads you on today, we're just going to sing one more song of praise to the Lord. And we just ask that you just worship with us and get your mind on Christ as we begin to get, prepare our hearts and our minds to receive the word of the Lord. Hallelujah.
Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, praise team, for leading us in those songs of praise. I also want to thank God for our sound and audio staff that worked so hard to help us make sure we have the ability to communicate not only in-house, but also to our internet, a family as well. Today, I just want to share a word with you on this morning that I pray will be a blessing to you and encourage you. The time in which we are living, many people get discouraged because it seems like people are giving up on worshiping God, praising God, honoring God, living a life for the King. Seems like we have lost our desire for fellowship. We don't even want to unite ourselves together as a family in Christ. We wonder why it's so hard to win those that don't know him. My God. We have allowed the enemy to scatter us. Mm -hmm. We've allowed the enemy to cause us to war and to fight one against another. My God. I said we need help from the sanctuary. Amen. Amen. I said we need strength out of Zion. Yes, Lord. We need God to Come in, remind us of how great he really is. Because we are not depending on ourselves. If you're depending on yourself, you already lost the battle. If you're depending on your flesh, if you're depending on another man, if you're depending on another woman, if you're depending on another person, no matter what they consider themselves, you're already on a road to failure. But my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Praise the Lord. I believe my black folder is still over there by you, First Lady. Somebody moved. Oh, I got it. It's me. Can I get somebody to bring that? Thank you, First Lady. Yes, underneath this. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God is such a good God. If, if I just had the voice yeah. to sing it, I would just sing a praise. Sing it, Pastor. Sing it. Yes, I would sing a praise. Thank you so much. Yes, Lord, I know he said make a joyful noise, but I'm going to leave that noise to someone else. My Lord. My Lord. Right. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Let's, I hear you deep. Thank you, Jesus. But God is an awesome. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And I'm just glad there's a song in my soul yes. today. Yes, Lord. Song of his praises. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I said a song of his praises. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not of my praises. It's not of your praises. But there's a song in my soul that is a song of his praises. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In the book of Judges, In the seventh chapter. Start at the first verse. Actually, I'm just going to start in the 16th verse. I'm just going to read a few verses. I'm going to let y'all read 
the sixth chapter, the seventh chapter, and the eighth chapter in your downtime. Praise the Lord. The scripture says, and he divided the 300 men into three companies, and he put a trumpet in every man's hand with empty pitchers and lamps within the pitchers. He said unto them, look on me and do likewise. And behold, when I come to the outside of the camp, it shall be that as I do, so shall ye do. When I blow with a trumpet, I and all that are with me, then blow ye the trumpets also on every side of all the camps, and say the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. So Gideon and the hundred men that were with him came into the outside of the camp, the beginning of the middle watch. They had but newly set the watch. They blew the trumpets and break the pitchers that were in their hands. The 300 companies blew the trumpet and break the pitchers and held the lamps in their hands and the trumpets in their right hands and blew with all and they cried the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And they stood every man in his place round about the camp, and all the hosts ran and cried and fled. The 300 blew the trumpets. The Lord set every man's sword against his fellow, even throughout all the host. And the host fled to Beth Shittah and Zerah, and to the border, Abel, Mahola, and Tarim. Praise the name of our God, and we're going to stop there. Lord God, we thank you this hour for this word that was read into our midst. As we come before you, we ask you to open up our ears and our hearts to be receptive unto your word. That we will turn away from those things that are not of God. Everything that we hold so dear, that are temporal, that we know will fade away. We ask you to release, help us to release those things. To draw nigh to your side. And closer to thee, for you alone have life. Able to give it more abundantly. So Lord, we surrender this hour into your hand. Our minds, our souls, and our bodies. We can be those living vessels. Yes, Lord. Oh God, ready and prepared for the master's use. Yes. Use our hands, use our eyes for your glory, oh God. Somebody may see our good works and begin to glorify our Father which is in heaven. Oh God, we want to be identified with you. We want to be ready, Lord God, to meet you when you come. And so use us now. Yes, Lord. Oh God, that we will speak, that we will witness unto a dying world right now. that Jesus Christ is still Lord and King. Oh, yes, Lord. And beside him there is none other. No other. Oh God, let your anointing break through every Hallelujah. part of our life Hallelujah. that is resistant to thee. Hallelujah. Oh God, and just have your way in our midst. Right now, and we'll ever praise you for your bountiful blessings. As the blessings that you bestow upon us yes. are used to touch somebody else, yes, Lord. be glorified. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. And amen. You may be seated. I'm sure there have been so many topics. Use this illustration of Gideon, one of the judges that was used by God in a mighty way. I look at this particular passage of scripture and I'm reminded 
that God does not need me All right, now. to be glorified. Amen. God does not need a large number Amen. to be glorified. God just needs somebody yes. who will surrender themselves Amen. to him. Someone who is watchful. Someone who is on guard. Observing their surroundings and how the enemy is approaching in their lives. So that God can make them ready. Amen. Stand against every force of darkness. That will come their way. Yes, Lord. I said God don't need many. Mm -hmm. For him to be loaded. Amen. Amen. When I look at this scripture. The Bible speaks of the children of Israel. Doing evil in the sight of the Lord in this exchange. It tells us because of their evil acts and their behavior, obstinance, their hard-headedness, God allowed them to go into captivity and to be plagued, rather, by the hands of the Midian knights that were in their area. This enemy, praise our God, prevailed against the children of Israel for seven years. They plagued them. Praise the name of our God, this nomadic tribe that was related to the Israelites, but yet they were individuals that were always in transition, moving to and fro. They were used to trading. They were known as being bandits. They would come in and pillage and rob from those around them, but they were great in number. Uh -huh. The Bible declares that when the children of Israel planted their harvest, and they were supposed to produce the, the blessings of their harvest, that the Midianites came and the Amalekites <laughs> spread themselves across their land and devoured their crops. Anybody ever had a point in your life where you felt like you were about to prosper? Mm -hmm. You felt like you were about to break through. It felt like you were about to receive the harvest. And the enemy comes in your life yes. and begins to plague your life. My God. My God. Sometimes in the pursuit of trying to find peace, mm -hmm. trying to find God working in your favor. Mm -hmm. Just seems like the enemy is always devouring what you have worked so hard to reap from. My God. The Bible says that they covered the earth. They came like grasshoppers for multitudes. They came not only by themselves, but they brought their camels. And they entered and they destroyed everything in the land until the Israelites were impoverished. It's a sad thing when you are in a position where you feel like you should be doing better than you are. Amen. But you are impoverished in the natural. Uh -huh. You're impoverished in the spiritual. Jesus. Feels like you have almost lost Everything, your hope, your desire, your press, your sense of urgency. Yes, Lord. Feel like you have lost your God and your love for God. Mm -hmm. So you are impoverished. You are broken and you don't know what to do. Jesus. The Bible says the Lord looked on them and the children of Israel began to cry unto the Lord. It's a sad thing when you are broken and you are impoverished and you are going through the storm and through the hardships, but instead of running to God, My God instead of crying out to God, 
You turn your back on God. You get angry with God. You get frustrated. The enemy has caused you to become so agitated until you can't even see where your help really comes from. The Bible declares that while the children of Israel were hiding in caves, while they were trying to take the little substance and the little goods that they did save for themselves after being plundered by the enemy and pillaged by the enemy, they took their goods and they hid them in caves and in places where they felt the Midianites and the Amalekites could not get to them. Uh, the Bible declares that while they were there, there was also a young man by the name of Gideon. And Gideon found himself thrashing wheat by the wine press to hide it. In other words, he had to camouflage and to work around what he had so the enemy couldn't tell that I still have a blessing from the Lord. Had to put it in the wine press or near the wine press so that he could disguise what God had already given unto his family. But how many of y'all know that if God is working in your corner, you don't have to worry about the enemy taking what is yours. Somebody tell the Lord hallelujah. hallelujah. But I want you to look at what... Gideon says, when the angel appears unto him in Ophrah, in the 11th verse, and then the 12th verse, it says unto him, and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him, and said unto him, the Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. I want you to know that Gideon didn't see himself as a mighty man of valor. Uh, matter of fact, Gideon looks at the angel and says unto him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then is all this fallen upon us? Why has this befallen us? In other words, if I'm looking at the situation correctly, it appears that the enemy has the upper hand in our lives and in our uh, surroundings. We look as though we are defeated. Uh, but let me tell you something. Uh, he began to ask these questions from his heart. And he says, where are all the miracles that our father spoke about and told us about did Amen. Not the Lord bring us up out from the land of Egypt and now has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. In other words, didn't our fathers tell us that God was able to do the impossible? Didn't our, our fathers tell us that God, amen, was able to work miracles? Didn't our fathers tell us that we were in captivity and the Lord brought us out and yet we are struggling in our land that God had provided unto us and ran out? Amen. The Amorites and those, amen, Habites and Hittites and Amen. All of the other ites that were before us. And yet we are here fighting a losing battle. And where are the miracles now? Praise our God. I hear some of y'all, amen, in the church talking about, amen, we need to go back, amen, to the old time way. And, and where is the anointing? And where is the fire? Uh, but I want to remind you that God worked then, but he's not just a God of then. He's a God of right now. And if he's going to work right now, there's got to be somebody that's willing to take up their cross and take up the, the and take on the baton and say, yes, Lord, I will follow you or I will run in this race until you bring me the victory in this generation. Somebody tell the Lord, hallelujah. And they forgot that the reason they were in this predicament is not because God didn't love them. Amen. They forgot that they were in this predicament 
predicament not because God stopped being able to deliver them. Amen. They were in this predicament not because God was no longer a mighty God and a wonder working God. Amen. They were in this predicament not because God had changed and now somehow amen didn't have the power amen to overcome the enemy. Amen. But they were in this predicament amen because they had done evil in the sight of the Lord. Uh, Y'all ain't gonna say nothing. In other words they didn't want to look back in their life in their praise the Lord their past and recognize their own failures and flaws somebody tell the Lord hallelujah oh yes they didn't want to look back and identify the fact that they had sinned against the Lord they didn't want to look back to the point where they said yes I recognize that I took God out of his rightful place and I put in an idol God in his place I don't want to look back and see amen when I disconnected from the king of glory and I connected to this vile demonic power in my life I don't want to look back when I took God out of his place and I took partying and drinking and gambling and cursing and swearing and gossiping and backbiting oh y'all ain't gonna say nothing and double mindedness and put it in the place of God I'm not gonna amen talk about when I stopped trusting him and began to trust in my own ability I'm not gonna talk about when I took God from his rightful place and I I began to trust in my friends and in my love and connections. I'm not going to talk about when I took God out of his place and I put pornography and all sorts of praise out God of immoral things in his place and start following after my flesh, after the thoughts in my mind. I'm not going to connect the dots because when I connect the dots, it's going to show me where God never failed but when I backed away from God and took him out of his place and put another God before me did you know God said thou shalt not have any other gods before me because I'm a jealous God oh y'all ain't gonna say nothing I said God must be first in your life and when you put him first you don't have to worry about the Midianites and about the Amalekites coming in your life and spreading out in your territory and eating up all of your blessings. Uh, Y'all ain't going to tell him hallelujah. Oh yes, you'd rather complain about it when I take two steps forward. It look like he knocked me five steps back. It's not the Lord that's knocking you back. It is what's in your flesh and what you have grabbed a hold to that's knocking you back. It's time to recognize. Anybody gonna say that with me? I said it's time to recognize who the enemy is for we are not wrestling against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers against wickedness in high places rulers of darkness of this world amen there's a battle going on that is spiritual and until you recognize that you need Jesus to be victorious in this battle you going to always be at a loss. The enemy is always going to plague your household. He's always going to plague your relationship. It's not that man. It's not that woman. There's a demon in your house and you got to identify who that demon is and you got to call on the Lord until he shed that demon to a flight. Somebody need to tell the Lord hallelujah. 
<laughs> oh yes, Gideon, I recognize I'm weak. I'm from a small tribe. I have no power to deliver your children from the hand of the Midianites. Look at them. They spread over the earth. Ah, God, and I don't have the ability to deliver them by myself. I hear you calling me a mighty man of valor, but I feel weak. I know you're calling me a mighty man of valor, but I feel small. I know you're calling me a mighty man of valor, but I'm broken, and I'm hiding out in the caves. But the angel reminded him, you're not by yourself. I want to remind you, Gideon, that the Lord is with you. Gideon said, Lord, if you're with me, let me test you out a little bit. Let me take this fleece and put it out before you tonight. And if you're with me, oh God, let the fleece be wet. And then let everything around the fleece be dry. And the Lord said, all right, I'm going to work with you. And in the morning when he woke up, the Bible said he picked up the fleece and it was soaking wet. And he was able, amen, to twist it and turn it until the liquid of the dew came out. But the next night, he said, Lord, if you just work with me a little longer, let me try you again. I'm going to put the fleece back out again. But tonight, I want the fleece to remain dry. And everything around it, I want it to be real, to be wet. And when he woke up in the morning, picked up the fleece, and the fleece was dry. I want you to know that God don't want you to have doubt in your mind. I know you got to face the enemy, but God wants you to face him knowing I'm with you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. But I'll be with you until the end of the world. I know you feel like you can't make it. But the Bible said, let the weak say that I'm strong. And matter of fact, if you got a word, I want you to strengthen your brother. Let them that have feeble knees, let them be strengthened. In other words, rise up and give God some praise. I know you feel defeated, but rise up and give God the glory. I know you feel like you've been conquered, but there is a God that is working in you and through you both the will and the do of his good pleasure. And it's his pleasure that he be glorified in your life. So get up from where you are. Amen. Stop murmuring. Stop complaining. Amen. Stop having a, a pity party. And get up and open your mouth. Amen. Stop sleeping and get up and open your mouth. Stop folding your arms and get up and open your mouth. Amen. And praise God because he has delivered you from the hand of the enemy. Somebody tell him hallelujah. The Bible declare. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise our God after trying God. Hallelujah. Amen. Got a word even from the enemy. Amen. That this, amen, is nothing more than the sword of the Lord and Gideon. Amen. That came in this dream unto the Midianites and the Amalekites. Amen. To encourage Gideon that the Lord was with him. Because the angel said, if you still got some concerns, I want you to go on down to the camp.
camp because I got a word for you, not from the prophet. Amen. The prophet spoke to the people, but I want you, Gideon, as the man of God, I want you to go down to the camp of your enemy. And when you get to your enemy's camp, I'm going to give you a word out of the mouth of your enemy. Amen. That I'm with you. How many of y'all glad that your enemy can speak blessings over your life? You may not like me, but that's all right because you may still be the individual that have a blessing for my life. Oh, yes, God can use whom He will. If you believe that, come on, clap your hands and give God a Oh yes, Gideon went down and got a word from the enemy. And that's the Lord, a man that is rolled down into the camp and took over the camp. That's the Lord's sword and Gideon. And then we read how, amen, the Lord took Gideon and he called for the men of Israel from all around the tribes and they came to fight with Gideon. But what I want you to know is when all of the men came together, the Lord looked at them and said, there's too many with you, Gideon. I need to be glorified. And so what I want you to do is just speak in their ear. Those of you that are afraid, those of you that really don't want to fight, I want you to go ahead and pack your bags and head on home. And the Bible declares that after they left, those that were afraid, Fearful, and those that really didn't want to fight, there were 10,000 men left. And God looked at them and said, There's still too many, Gideon. I need to prove them. So bring them down to the water. And the men that get on one knee and stick their hand in the water and begin to lap out of their hand. Amen. As they look around, I want you to know that those men I'm going to use. But everyone that get on both knees and drop their head to drink out of the water, they're not observant. They're not watching what's coming their way. I can't use them. Send them back home. But the ones that are left, that are observing and are watching, amen, that are ready and are prepared, amen, to fight I want you to use them. And when God got through, there were 300 men, 300 left. But God said, I don't need a lot of men. I just need somebody that'll listen to the voice of the Lord. Because when I go through the Midianites, when I go through the Ishmaelites and the Amalekites, I want them to know that it was not by the hand of the Israelites themselves but it was by the sword of the Lord and his servant Gideon anybody know this is not your ministry this is not my ministry but I'm here to stand as a representative and a servant of the king so if there's victory in the camp it's gonna be by the sword of the Lord and and his servant who will yield unto him. Anybody gonna praise him today? I don't got to depend on my strength. I don't have to depend on my ability. I don't have to depend on my wisdom alone. But on Christ, the solid rock, I stand. And all of the ground is shaking sand. I dare not trust the sweetest fame. But holy lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, anybody looking to Christ. Oh yes, oh yes. The enemy's fighting on every hand. But God don't need a large number to be glorified. 
God. What God needs is somebody that will take in their hand what he has given unto them and will open their mouth that will blow the trumpet in Zion and say the Lord has given us the victory oh yes the sword of the Lord is with us and we are his servants anybody gonna praise him in the house you need deliverance you need a refreshing you need a reminder of who you are you need to look back where the Lord brought you from and remember you're not by yourself you just need a refreshing and a renewing and a reviving in your spirit and God is saying just take up amen the word of God and get boldness and courage in the Lord because I I, the Lord your God I'm going to fight your battle oh yes you don't need a lot of people in prayer service to get a prayer through you just need to pray without ceasing the Bible declare wherever two or three are gathered together in my name I'll be in the midst I don't know about you but when the prayer presence of the Lord come down I said every demon is set to a flight when the presence of the Lord come down and the Shekinah glory fill the house I said and the praise ring out in your soul and the joy of the Lord flow like a river I said strength is coming out of Zion say yeah it if you love him, say yeah. If you love him, come on, stand on your feet and open your mouth and give him the glory. I said he don't need a large congregation. The Lord just needs somebody that will praise him in a new song, in a new dance, in a new testimony. Look where he brought me from he brought me out of darkness into the marvelous light he brought me out of sin and shame I don't know about you but I was shame for some of the things I did but look at God he lifted me out of the muck in the mire I said he cleansed me and wash me in his blood. Anybody in here has been blood washed? Anybody in here has been purged through the blood of the Lamb? Anybody in here has been healed from disease in your spirit? Anybody in here, the Lord has made you whole and complete in him to give him some praise. You don't need a large number to be glorified. You just need a willing vessel. That will praise you. Thank you, Lord. 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 I didn't ask you for all of those things. I said, I'm with you. If I'm with you. I'm more than the whole world. I think somebody need to tell them hallelujah. I didn't ask you if you stutter. 
I didn't ask you if you got cancer. I didn't ask you if you have, praise the Lord, family problems. I said, I want to use you for my glory. And if you let me use you, whatever you're going through, when I get done with you, I'm going to fix you from the inside out. And anything broken, I'll put it back together again. Do you trust me enough? Amen. Do you trust me? Praise the Lord enough to do the work. I know men have violated you. you. I know men have hurt you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But I'm God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I made you for my glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I love you. The world is full of vile things. Oh, God, I thank you, Lord. But God said, I know how to bless you. I know how to make you right. Lord, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. All I'm asking you is do you trust me enough? Yes, Lord, I trust you, Lord. To be that man of God. To be that woman of God. Because when you come out of your cave, when you finally come out of your hiding place, God said, then I'm going to bless you. When you come out of your chaos in your mind, let me renew your thinking, then I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make you something you never thought you would ever be. I'm going to make you more than a doctor. I'm going to use you for my glory. You don't need a lot. Good luck. 